I'm Jamila Musaiba, an international social etiquette consultant and the author of the book Etiquette, the least you need to know. Today's video is dedicated to how to become a better speaker. I know a lot of you have been asking me to do a video on this topic, but I was quite hesitant at the beginning. Firstly, because I'm not a speaking coach, I'm not a voice coach, and also because when I was in university at GW, I had to take a voice and diction class. And funny story, I didn't pass the voice test. I was the only one in class who did not pass the voice test. When I was asked to speak more loudly, when I was asked to project my voice, I wasn't able to do it. So my voice did not pass a certain threshold. What happened at the end of the day, I did end up passing the class with very good grade, primarily because of my presentation skills and because of the way I was presenting information, giving speeches but with a voice test, I failed it. I had to take extra hours with a special voice coach that massaged my larynx, that made me to speak in very crowded places and made me project my voice a lot louder, which I wasn't able to do. Today, as a teacher, I have to speak and I speak a lot. And sometimes I give personal or public workshops in front of a large audience. I need to project my voice. It is very difficult for me because of the physical traits of my vocal cords, but it's a work in progress. Now you know my story and why I was hesitant to do this video, but from my work experience, I was able to gather certain tips that I'm ready to share with you, and I hope they help you as well to become the best speaker that you can possibly be. First and foremost, why does speaking matter matter? I know a lot of you have been commenting on my videos, making funny jokes about how it's an unintentional ASMR video, and I love reading about that because I myself am a huge fan of ASMR, and I think a lot of people around the world are very sensitive to sounds. Um, this is because sounds help us distinguish people that are amicable, credible, gentle, soft, kind, those kind of traits that we're looking in humans and we are more likely to be drawn to those that share that. I'm sure I'm not alone in this and I'm sure a lot of you have had experiences where you either dropped the class because the professor spoke too loudly or maybe he spoke too fast or maybe because the pitch of his voice was either too low or too high and you couldn't quite understand it or and the sound was very annoying to your ears or sometimes you fell in love with someone because of the way they sounded even without seeing them. So there were stories when people fell in love with each other on the phone, talking to each other, and they fell in love first with the voice of the person and then actually seeing that person. No matter what kind of job you do, let it be representing your client in front of a judge, explaining something to your patient, um, explaining a topic to your students, passing a job interview, marketing something, all of these professions require some sort of speaking skill. And the better you become at speaking, the better off you're gonna be in your profession. Speaking is so important that even some politicians get specific voice coaches or speaking trainers that help them to establish that kind of a speaking style that makes them sound credible, amicable, uh, likable by the electors. Interestingly, Margaret Thatcher, who was the UK Prime Minister in the 1970s, she had a voice coach and that was because she had a very high-pitched voice that wasn't really likable by the electors or it made her sound not confident and it made her sound not really credible. So the voice coach had to work to lower her pitch, to work on the tone of her voice, to help her alternate the tone of her speaking manner so that she sounds more interesting to her electors. Some have even gone as far as to get a surgery on their vocal cords in order to change the pitch of their voices. So politicians know that speaking is important and we now know that it's important in almost all professions. Before we get into the tips on how to become a better speaker, I want to emphasize this. You don't have to sound like someone else. 
just like you don't have to be or look like someone else. You are you and you're unique. You have your own structure of vocal cords, your larynx are unique to you, your lungs are unique to you. So the way you sound is the way you sound. And the only thing you can work on is how to become the best speaker that you can possibly be. First things first, let's get into more technical part. What are some elements of our sound, of our voice? Number one is the pitch. So what is the pitch? The pitch is how your voice sounds based on the rate of the vibrations that their vocal cords produce. The range of the pitch is from low to quiet. Usually men tend to have lower pitch voices and women tend to have more high pitch voices. This is because of the hormones that we have. The hormones, testosterone and estrogen influence the growth of our vocal cords and the structure of our vocal cords. So we are born with a certain structure of vocal cords and that determines the pitch of our voice. Of course, some people have undergone plastic surgery to drastically change the pitch of their voice, but if you want to alternate just a bit within the same range, let's say you have a super high pitch voice and help you lower that a little bit, you can look up some exercise on how to alternate that. There are a lot of exercises online that can help you alternate the pitch of your voice within a small range. The second element is the volume. This refers to the speaker's voice level. We usually characterize it as being low or quiet to being high to being loud. Generally, men tend to have more louder voices. That's because of the structure of their larynx, of their vocal cords, and the size of their lungs. So the bigger all of them are, the louder is your voice. Women, on the other hand, tend to have more quieter voices. We tend to associate people with louder voices to be more outgoing, to be more confident, whereas people with quiet voices to be more shy. This is of course a stereotype, um, but in certain ways it is true. Apart from the physical characters that determines the volume of our voice, it's also the cultural upbringing, where we were born, our age, perhaps even how we hear also affects our voice level. People in Africa tend to speak more loudly than people in Asia, and that's a cultural difference. I have gotten emails where people tell me, oh, you know, I speak so loudly, I feel like I'm looking obnoxious when I'm around other people, how can you help me to speak more quietly? And I think we need to be aware of what is our natural volume. And when we talk about natural volume, is what is the volume of your voice when you're alone by yourself, you know, maybe speaking to your mom or maybe speaking to your sister, or maybe when you're just singing a song or something. So that will establish the natural volume of your voice. And then observe, look at yourself from the side. How do you sound when you're in a social environment? Perhaps in a social gathering, you tend to lower your voice because you don't feel comfortable or you feel shy around those people or maybe you increase the volume of your voice because you want to be noticed or heard, you want to look more outgoing. This will help you understand what really affects the volume of your voice. Again, I think whenever you choose a certain volume, you have to make sure that it works in your advantage. So that is helpful in your social life, that's helpful in your work life. If you're a teacher and you need to speak more loudly, then you should train yourself to project your voice. If you're a person that speaks already way too loudly and you've been you know, being commented on the, your, the volume of your voice and you want to lower it, then you should probably work on techniques to lower the natural volume of your voice. And the third, the most important element is your tone. And tone is really the rhythm, the pace of your speaking style. You have to alternate it in order to make it sound more interesting. We describe a tone as friendly or unfriendly. We can describe it as dominant. We can describe it as assertive or persuasive or sarcastic. There are different adjectives that we use to describe a tone depending on how we hear it from the person that is addressing us. I always tell my students that whatever the situation is, make sure you control your tone. Even if you can't control the message, make sure you control the tone. Let's say you're in a very hostile environment or someone asks you something impolitely, keep your tone amicable, but send the message that you want to be sent. You can say something, you know, with 
I don't think this is the right way to address me. So you're using an amicable tone, but you're saying what you want them not to do or uh, you don't like the thing that they were doing. By having an amicable tone, you set the right environment for your message because before they hear the message, they hear the tone of your voice. When it comes to public speaking, we always refer to monotone as something being bad or boring. If someone's presentation or speaking skill is monotone, it means that they speak on the same tone level. So the pace of their speech is the same, they don't alternate it, and therefore they bore the audience. It's important to keep that alteration in the right way so that the audience that listens to you stays engaged and understands when is the emphasis being being made or when is the message important. This is done through a tone and through enunciation. Enunciation is something that I will be shortly addressing in the tips. But for now, I just want to finalize it that the tone of your speech is like a salt and pepper to any dish. It's the thing that flavors, that gives that extra taste to your speech, to your speaking manner. So make sure that you work on the tone and the rhythm of your speech in order to make it more interesting. So here are some tips that will help you to become a better speaker. Number one is breathing. Breathing is so important because it's actually the air that passes through our vocal cords that makes them vibrate and produce a sound. Essentially, without air, we will make no sound at all. This is an exercise you can try at home. Exhale all the air from your lungs and try to say a long sentence. See how much you can actually say or how your voice sounds. And then inhale and say that sentence when you have inhaled and see how you sound now. You will see that when you have exhaled and had no air in your lungs, you barely were able to complete the sentence. Whereas when your lungs were full of air, you were able to sound more confidently and speak more easily. Another thing that I suggest, oftentimes the reason we don't sound the way we would like to sound, especially when we are nervous, is because we run out of the air. When that is the case, make sure you take a pause. You pause, you inhale, you fill your lungs with the air, and you're ready to say a new sentence. Here's the breathing technique that a lot of public speakers are being taught, and that's called the diaphragmatic breathing, especially prior to giving a speech. So what happens is you have to put one hand on your chest and you put another hand below your rib cage. You inhale and you exhale. When you inhale and exhale, your chest will remain stable, whereas you have to feel the diaphragm that expands and contracts. When you're breathing this way, you're ensuring that the air is flowing very smoothly and enables you to speak the best way that you can. To wrap it up, to speak well, you have to inhale, you have to take pauses, and you have to continue breathing while talking. Talking about taking pauses takes me to another step, which is make sure to pause when giving a speech. Pauses are essential in a speech. I can't emphasize this enough because pauses make your words sound better. They make your listener be more interested in what you are saying. Words after silence are a lot more powerful. Pauses are like full stops in your speech or even like a separate paragraph. They help the listener divide your message into specific paragraphs or messages you have to be able to use them to emphasize certain ideas. So for example, let's say if I say something without a pause is, I believe we should be venturing into a new market because I think that's gonna be bringing us new clients. Or I'm gonna be taking now pauses when saying the same sentence. I believe we should be venturing into new markets because I believe it will be bringing us new clients. See the difference in the message? It's the same structure, it's the same sentence, but it sounds a lot different just because I put pauses in between. Taking pauses is something politicians and public speakers are being taught not only when giving a speech, but also when answering questions. You might oftentimes see uh, someone, a journalist, ask the politician a question and before answering, they take a pause. This is especially intentionally done 
to make it seem like they're reflecting and also to then make their message sound a lot stronger than if they were just to jump in and answer immediately. Along with the pauses, it's important to alternate the speed of your speech. And by that, I mean how fast you talk. Let's say if you talk way too fast, you sound like you're anxious, you're nervous, it's most likely that people will not understand what you're saying, especially if you have an accent. Accent and speed will make it a disaster. People will not understand you. On the other hand, if you speak way too slowly, it's likely that you're going to bore your audience by the end of your speech. So keeping that alteration of speed makes your speech sound a lot more interesting and engaging to the audience. I like to compare it a lot with a song. So say any of your favorite songs, listen to it and see, observe the speed of the song. You're most likely to find the introduction to be slow or either the introduction to be fast and the verse to be slow. There is definitely an alternation in the speed of the song that makes it so engaging and so likable. Taking the right posture is super important in the way you sound. Uh, you can see why politicians are speaking when they are standing up or when they are seated down and they are seated straight. This is because this posture allows the air to enter your vocal cords easily, therefore your vocal cords are able to vibrate more smoothly. On the other hand, if your shoulders are tense, if you slouch, if you take this uncomfortable position where you obstruct the air from entering your vocal cords, you will not sound so good. You will not have enough air in your vocal cords and therefore they're not going to be able to vibrate that smoothly, therefore you will not sound so well. The next tip is drinking water. I'm sure you've noticed this uh, when observing someone's interview or maybe listening to someone speak in front of a large public, they definitely have a glass of water nearby. And this is to make sure that the speaker is able to drink some water to hydrate the vocal cords so they're able to vibrate more smoothly. Many of us drink coffee early thing in the morning and then we drink coffee throughout the day. And then we have to walk into the room in front of shareholders or clients and give a speech or presentation. Imagine what's happening to our vocal cords. They're dehydrated from coffee and definitely we need to drink a lot of water to make sure that they are hydrated. So I advise you to drink a glass of water and take small sips of water every time right before the presentation is to be delivered. So let's say you have an hour before the presentation. So throughout that hour, take sip by sip and drink that one glass of water. Do not drink all at once because it's not going to help much. It's not going to help hydrate your vocal cords in the way that you wish to hydrate them right before giving the speech. I usually make a comparison to applying a cream on your face. If you apply a whole bunch of cream on your face, not all of it will be absorbed immediately. Instead, layer it um, little by little and in that way you will ensure that your skin is getting more hydration. The same technique applies to hydrating your vocal cords. Raise your voice only when necessary. I know a lot of us think that if we speak more loudly, people will be able to hear us better, but that's not always the case. We have to speak more loudly when we want to project our voice to a larger audience. Say it's a big room and there are people sitting way, way behind and they need to hear you too. In that case, you will be asked to speak more loudly. But if you want to draw the attention of people to you, do not speak more loudly. Instead, lower your voice. Because when you lower the voice, when it becomes more silent, when it becomes more quiet in the room, people will calm down and will actually notice you better. Have you ever heard of the power of a whisperer? I think that's true in a lot of cases that I've observed. Those who speak more quietly tend to draw the attention more to the message of what they're trying to deliver. You have to understand the difference between speaking loudly to be heard and speaking loudly to project your voice to those that are seated far away from you and need to hear you. If you want to draw attention, lower your voice. If you want to be heard by those in the back, raise your voice. The next tip that's so important is enunciation. And I say it like that because that's pretty much what it is. Enunciation, pointing out 
the letters in your words. It's different from pronunciation because pronunciation has to do more with the phonetics, with how certain letters together sound. And you might have pronunciation mistakes because perhaps you're speaking a language that's not your native language and you have difficulties in pronouncing certain words. Enunciation is different, is the way you speak out those letters. So for example, let's say you slur words or you drop certain letters, that is enunciation mistakes. An example that I want to give you is Let's say the word doing, we know that we have to pronounce the G at the end in ING. So we have to say, what are you doing? And instead we say, what are you doing? Without pronouncing the letter G. That makes it sound not so great. The listener will get tired of that kind of enunciation. You have to make sure that you pronounce the words and the letters correctly. You have to make sure that you don't drop any letters that have to be pronounced and that you have to emphasize the words without slurring or alternating them. And finally, I advise everyone who are working on their speaking manner is to film yourself. You can do it on your smartphones, you can either video record yourself if you want to see how you look and how you sound together, but if you don't want to get distracted by the image of yourself, you might want to do a voice memo so you can actually listen to how you sound and work only on your speaking manner. Filming yourself, taping yourself is not one-time thing. It's not like you do it, you look and then you let it go. It's a lifelong process, I call it. I think it's a formation of your speaking style. So you have to continuously tape yourself and observe yourself from the side and work on certain things that you want to improve. Again, to all my viewers, I always say, we don't have to sound or look like someone else. We have to be ourselves and we have to be the best version of ourselves. Trust me, it's a work in progress for everyone. You're not the only one working on yourself. We all are each and every day. And that's the only way that we can help ourselves. You are your best trainer and you're your best voice coach. I will not be able to be there and guide you through each and every step. But if you use these tips and apply it in your daily lives, I assure you, you're going to be the best speaker that you can possibly be. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm looking forward to your likes and comments. Please let me know what are some things that you would like to hear about and I'll be more than happy to film it for you. And do not forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching this and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!